May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness. May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness. May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness. Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan. May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness. May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness. Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another live episode of our daily show during Ramadan, Blessed Nights. I ask Allah Almighty to accept our fasting, our prayers, our recitation of the Qur'an and all of our good deeds bi-idhnillah, ameen. Uh, I also hope that uh, everybody's going to take advantage of these blessed nights and blessed days and enjoy them as well as benefit from the good deeds that they do during that month. Um, uh, as, as you all know from yesterday's episode, the idea behind this show is that we are going to touch base on some Ramadan-based topics we are going to have a lot of guest uh, doctors and sheikhs. Uh, they will be uh, basically joining us with a lot of different reports or live video uh, conferences. And they will uh, give us uh, answers to a lot of the questions that we will discuss, inshallah. And uh, as always, with me on, on the show, uh, Brother Mustafa Abdel Qayyum. Uh, he's going to be joining us uh, today. And he will also be. Um, introducing our guest speakers and our reporters. Uh, before we, we, we start with any of that, I just want to ask you, <laughs> Brother Mustafa, first of all, how are you doing? I'm good, alhamdulillah, thank you for asking. Not a problem. And uh, the second thing I wanted to ask you, how different is this Ramadan compared to previous Ramadans? Uh, what are you doing that is different? How are you spending your time? Well, it's, it's a matter of a new circumstance, you know, as new conditions brings about new actions, uh, different ways of organizing things. You're working remotely more than you are face to face with anyone and seeing family members is a bit more difficult. So you tend to um, pay more electric bills and Internet <laughs> bundles in order <laughs> to reach up to your family and loved ones. Mm, true, true. You have to be you have to stay connected somehow. Of course. Um, now, we, like I mentioned before, we do have a lot of different reports from many scholars from all over the world. Uh, can you tell us who our first reporter is going to be? Who's, who's our first scholar or public speaker? Uh, I'll be honored. The, okay. the first one is our beloved Dr. Haytham Al Haddad, and he is the head board of advisors in the organization of the UK as well, uh, the Islamic organization that is. And it's going to be a short speech. It's going to be very informative, very concise. I love these people. You know, I love Dr. Haytham. He's very straight to the point about it. One of the main benefits of the programs he he had established before uh, is missed opportunities for, for such an uh, such as Tarawih and Hivs and so on. Okay, so that's that's going to be the title of his uh, report for today. Yes. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that. Like, I, uh, uh, doc Dr. Haytham. Uh, was a presenter on on uh, Huda TV. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He oh. he had two different shows. Uh, the first one, I believe, was uh, called Deception, and the second one was pro uh, Be Proactive. Be Proactive. Uh, we will um, stop what we're doing right now. We will go to the report, and we will get back to resuming our episode, inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Dear respected brothers and sisters It is the mercy of Allah جل وعلا to give us opportunities behind any challenge Yes, this is well known This is a well established divine law Because Allah جل وعلا says يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر. Allah desires ease for you and He doesn't desire hardship for you. And Allah جل وعلا told us that the خير and the شر is all بلاء is all a test. And Allah Allah جل وعلا says when أبلوكم بالشر والخير فتنة. We test you by bad things that you see as bad and with خير with good things. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم 
made it clear in one beautiful hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, amazing is the affair of the believer. If he were to be uh, touched by good things, receive good news, he will be thankful to Allah Jalla Ala, and that will increase his reward, and that will give him even more, because as you know, brothers, Allah Jalla Ala says, Wala in shakartum la If you are thankful to Allah Jalla Ala, Allah Jalla Ala will give you more. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, if you were afflicted by something that you consider as bad, then you will be sabr, and that will give you reward. For the sabr and the calamity that you went through will remove some of your sins. So this lockdown is really bringing so many opportunities for those who are looking for opportunities. And those who are looking for excuses, even if so many opportunities were given to them, they will not utilize them. Subhanallah. There is the great opportunity of raising the adhan in our homes while we are locked down. Yes, raising the adhan. Subhanallah. Don't, brothers and sisters, I know that there are so many fatwas that you don't need to raise the adhan. I am telling you, no, raise the adhan, not just because it is obligatory or it is not obligatory. No, raise the adhan because of the amount of reward you are going to get behind raising the adhan because of the amount of goodness that will take place in your house because you are raising the adhan. The Prophet ﷺ, look at this. First of all, adhan is the sign of tawheed. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. So you are announcing Tawheed in your house. Beside that, the Prophet ﷺ said, if people know the reward of attending the first line of Salah and raising the Adhan, they would compete to attend the first line and to raise the Adhan. The Prophet ﷺ in Hadith Muawiyah said that the people who give the adhan have the tallest necks on the day of resurrection. The scholars said, yeah, they will have the tallest necks on, on the day of resurrection because they are looking forward for the reward that Allah Jalla wa Ala hid for them or because of their in honor and status. So they have the tallest necks or because the sweat that will block our breaths on the day of resurrection they will have tall necks, and that's why that sweat will not block their breathing. The Prophet ﷺ said, again, in Hadith Abi Huraira, that, uh, uh, that when the adhan is raised, the shaitan will run away while he is breaking or it will break wind. And then when the, when the adhan comes to an end, the shaitan will come back. And when the iqama is raised, the shaitan will run away again. Subhanallah. You are going to kick out the shayateen from your house if you are what? If you are raising the adhan. The scholar said, why the shaitan run away when the adhan is raised while the shaitan attends? As the Prophet says, attends your salah in order to confuse you. They said this is because the other hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, hadith Abi Sa'id al-Khudri in Sahih Muslim, that if the adhan is raised, or uh, when the adhan is raised, everything listens to the adhan, jinn, ins, and anything will testify for the person who is raising the adhan on the day of resurrection. And the shaitan does not want to testify for the person who is raising the adhan, adhan. It is really amazing, brothers and sisters. And that's why in the other hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says that al-mu'adhin, the one who raises the adhan, anyone who will listen to him will testify for him on the day of resurrection that he is what? He is a believer. In one narration, the Prophet ﷺ says, يُغْفَرُ لَهُ مَدَّ صَوْتِهِ yeah, in Hadith Abi Umama, that he, he will have forgiveness as far as his voice goes. Look at this. Not only that, brothers and sisters, Allah Jalla wa Ala, in one narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah Jalla wa Ala will look at the person, yeah, 
and Allah Jalla wa ala will be amazed at a shepherd who is in the desert. The adhan, the salah time comes, and then he raises the adhan and he prays. Allah Jalla wa ala will say to the malaika, "Look at my slave." He raises that, then he prays. He feels of me. I have granted him forgiveness. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu also says that one time the Prophet sallallahu heard a person who is raising the adhan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. He said he is upon fitrah. And then that person says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. The Prophet sallallahu says his, for his sins were forgiven. Allahu Akbar. Look at this. The Prophet sallallahu says if you raise the adhan, uh, if you pray, by yourself because you are in the desert the your two angels will pray behind you however if you raise the adhan and you pray by yourself because you are in the desert no one is praying with you many people many angels will pray behind you to the level that you cannot see the end of the line from both sides allahu akbar not only that brothers and sisters but the reward behind repeating behind the Mu'addin. And the Prophet ﷺ says in Hadith Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, very beautiful Hadith. He said to Amr, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, if you hear the Adhan, repeat after what the Mu'addin said. And then ask Allah Jalla wa'ala for Salah upon me, the one who makes Salah upon me. He will what? Allah Jalla wa'ala will send 10 salawat upon him and then ask Allah Jalla wa'ala for me al wasila because it is a status that does not befit for anyone to have that except for me. The one who asks Allah Jalla wa'ala al wasila for me, that is status for me, he will deserve my intercession on the day of resurrection. Look at this. And the Prophet sallallahu says, the one who hears the adhan, in one narration, either when he hears, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulallah, and he says, wa ana ashhadu radiyatu billahi rabban, wa bil islam dinan, wa bi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rasul an nabiyya, he will have all his previous sins forgiven. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you repeat what the Mu'addin have said, and after that, you can ask Allah Jalla wa'ala, it will be given to you. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said that when the Adhan is raised, the gates of heavens will be open for you, which means that the dua will be guaranteed. Some scholars said that during the Adhan, or after the Adhan, or maybe both. So five virtues for the person who is listening to the adhan, not making the adhan. Five virtues. And the last thing that I would like to mention, my dear respected brothers and sisters, women and adhan. Subhanallah, I like the very beautiful fatwa by Ibn Umar. They ask him, can women or should women raise the adhan? What was the answer of Ibn Umar? He said, after he was angry, he said, do you want me to stop them from making the dhikr of Allah Jalla wa ala? No, they can't make it. Although some scholars said, no, they shouldn't make it. Make it, sisters, if there is no male around you to raise the adhan. Raise the adhan by yourself if, they, if the non-mahram males don't hear you. May Allah Jalla wa ala make us among those who raise the adhan. Jazakumullah khaira. Assalamu alaikum alaykum wa rahmatullah. Beautiful report by uh, Dr. Haytham al-Haddad. Uh, MashaAllah, again, he was uh, one of uh, Huda TV's presenters for many, many shows, um, some of which are, as I mentioned before, uh, Be Proactive and uh, Deception. Um, Brother Mustafa, what, what do you think about what we just heard right now? There's so many different beautiful topics that he touched upon with the opportunities and the missed opportunities and how can we capitalize on different ways of, of gaining uh, thawab. SubhanAllah brother, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all glorious and all generous. He has given us this religion. You do very simple actions and look at the extent of the reward itself. Yeah. Um, like SubhanAllah, you're praying. If you were in a desert, you would say, oh, now I'm not going to be taking the thawab of al-jama'ah, you know, pray, praying in congregation. 
with <coughs> other people as well. But then look at that. The Prophet Sallallahu came and told you that if you sound the Adhan and you pray by yourself, be, uh, be certain that you're not praying by yourself. The angels are praying with you. And the number of angels, as far as the eye can see, and you can't even determine the number of angels praying with you. And the benefits of, of, of uh, uh, the Adhan, uh, like, you know, performing the Adhan on your own and how it protects your, your household. It's, that's a beautiful topic and, 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 and many more that uh, the doctor was mentioning. Do you, do you recall any or do you want to like comment or feedback on any of those? Uh, well, I can never add anything that the doctor, mashallah, <laughs> has already stated. But definitely look at the Quran. If you recite the Quran at home, the devil ca can't really get inside. If you read Surah Al-Baqarah, that is. And in the same time, if you abide by dhikr or any kind of remembrance or invocations, the devil cannot even interfere, cannot even enter your household. You're protecting throughout the day by doing very simple actions. It doesn't require that you build a fort and so on. Just remember Allah and please Him. And the rest is automatically done. That's it. MashaAllah, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. Okay, so what's what's the next uh, report that we have? Who's who's our next speaker? Well, MashaAllah, we have I the Imam. He's called Imam Rifat Muhammad, and he is the president of the Canadian Council of Imams, MashaAllah. Okay, okay. uh, one of the titles that uh, of the programs he has done, having a unique Ramadan. So it's going to be a very short report. Again, MashaAllah, the shiuch, they, they're very concise. They bring the points about. And let's see what they will offer us today, inshallah. Uh, I also uh, I also know that uh, he he was also a presenter here on on Huda TV, and uh, he did uh, many many shows. But you know, some of which were uh, the ones that I can remember at least are uh, here and obey. Um, and the other one was I believe called Flashback. Flashback. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually looking forward to uh, hopefully have him uh, someday join us live rather than just giving us a report because I want to ask about uh, the Canadian situation <laughs> because you know definitely I would have take, me, for take me back well. take me back to the good old days <laughs> okay let's uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my dear brothers and sisters uh, thank you so much for having me and uh, this is a, a great again a great opportunity for myself to participate in Al Huda TV programs I know this is uh, very challenging and very unique Ramadan this year very special as well, with a very good taste and very uh, different feelings. I know all Muslims around the world are actually uh, competing to do the best they can in order to have a beautiful Ramadan, inshallah. Uh, though it is tough, though it is hard, because we are not able to gather, we are not able to see our friends and our family members, but I can tell you that it will have a very special taste for all Muslims, inshallah. The Muslims always have chances to and have uh, different ideas to take the advantage of the beautiful month of Ramadan. Ramadan came this year while, while everybody is isolated, uh, all families are closing their doors, everybody is locked down actually. And we have advised um, uh, since the beginning of this uh, uh, calamity, the problem of uh, uh, the pandemic of, of COVID-19, we have advised uh, all masajid to, uh, to, to close the doors for public, just for the safety of everyone. Uh, as for us in Canada, similarly as any other country, we are the same. Uh, most people are not going out very often. We are being advised to stay at home uh, most of the time, even to work from home. Masajid close the doors for uh, public. Only the staff or imams attend to masajid, uh, not all the time, but uh, most of the times, uh, in order to maintain the services. Uh, I know that it will be challenging this time, because Ramadan is a very special month for all of us. We always have different feelings when Ramadan comes. It is time to gather with family. It is time to uh, connect with, with friends and to have iftars all the, all the months, especially in the Islamic centers and masajid. And I know that is a similarly the case in the Middle East. People get together, invitations and uh, iftars, and a uh, very beautiful feeling that people usually have with this blessed month of Ramadan. I know it is, alhamdulillah, as we all know, it is the holiest month for all of us, and we usually wait for that month. We make dua all the time that Allah gives us a chance to live until another Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, I can tell everybody that we still live another Ramadan. We still have the chance to get the best reward, inshallah, if we do the best actions and best deeds during this blessed month of Ramadan. This Ramadan comes with all whatever it's happening. I know some of us even... Uh, have lost their loved ones because of COVID-19. In some cases, may Allah protect everyone. 
we do sincerely make dua to everyone around the world that Allah protect them from this virus COVID-19 and to cure those who are sick and to protect everyone else who was not uh, infected and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove as soon as possible this pandemic and this uh, virus uh, uh, for all people around the world. Now when it comes to masajid and when it comes to our worship, when it comes to our prayers, when it comes to our gatherings and our social connection and physical connection with our friends and our family members, as we are unable to do that, to visit masjids or to attend prayers or to follow our imams physically in the same masjid, but that we have the ability to do most of these things even though we are at home with our family members. I mean, we still do the fasting, so this is a, a one blessing. We're still alive to attend Ramadan this year, which is a great opportunity for us to live one more Ramadan, one more time. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So we thank Allah for the blessing of being again able to live another Ramadan. Though Ramadan is different this year, but it's still Ramadan the same. The gates of Jannah are widely opened, and the gates of Jahannam, the hellfire is completely locked, and shayateen are chained. So Alhamdulillah, we have the opportunity to worship Allah, to do good deeds, to give charity, to be generous, to fast, to make dua, to pray five times in, on, on their times with our family members. We have, we have ability to make jama'at at home with our kids and our spouses. Uh, we are, alhamdulillah, have the ability to listen to so much, to listen to the, t to the TV channels like Al Huda, to listen to programs, to watch uh, through the internet all the different imams, our local imams, and also imams from other places. We can learn a lot now. We see that the schools are closed, our kids are too. There is a lot of chances for them to learn and to pray with parents and to have fun with them. I know it is hard, but we can do it. Alhamdulillah, we have the ability to make difference uh, when it comes to being locked down. Allah Azza wa is giving us a test, and I, we definitely will go through this test. So we have the month of dua, so we will sit at the time of Maghrib and we'll make dua. We don't have to be in the masjid to make dua, so Alhamdulillah, we will pray at home. Alhamdulillah, in Islam, you can pray anywhere. As the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned, that all the earth is for him is a masjid. So you can pray anywhere, at home, at work, at park, at, uh, uh, if the masjid is closed, you pray anywhere. Even we can pray in the plane and the car and the train and the ship, we can pray. So the prayer can be done anywhere. So Alhamdulillah, these are blessings in Islam that Muslim can do. Fasting can be done easily when we are, when we are within our family members. Alhamdulillah, jama'at, congregationally, we can do it with our kids and our family members. Even with the minimum verses of the Qur'an we memorize, we can read them in our salat with al-Fatiha, and our salat is established. I know one of the very visible actions and worship that comes with Ramadan is Salat al-Taraweeh, because this is a month of the Qur'an, it's a month of Qiyam. Whoever fast and whoever do Qiyam, Allah will forgive all their previous sins. And we understand that Taraweeh is very special when it is done in the Masjid with Jama'ah. But still we can do it at home, even if we, we have to read even three verses, or we read small chapters from the Qur'an that we know. And in Taraweeh time, actually, we can open the Qur'an and read from it. So we have the chance to stay more in prayer, and also we can read more Qur'an if we wanted to. If we have only limited number of surahs, and we want to read them only, read them only. Even if you read one surah and you repeat it in all 11 rakats in Taraweeh, that is acceptable and your Taraweeh is valid, inshallah. Uh, also, when we get together with our family members within the same household and for iftar, the same feeling, inshallah, I know we are missing the opportunity to be with many, as many brothers and sisters as we usually do, but inshallah, we will come out of this stronger and we'll have different practices that we will keep on doing after Ramadan, inshallah. Still, Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an, so we'll be able to read Qur'an as often as we used to read when we are going to the masajid. At home now, you have the ability, uh, using these technologies, alhamdulillah, that this pandemic happened. While we are actually having the best technology, we have TVs, we have internet, we have social media, we have connections, we can connect with everybody. Maybe we are uh, physically distanced, 
but we are able to to connect with our family members and our friends socially through the internet so we can listen to the lectures we can see the prayers we can listen to the azans and we can learn as well from all these imams and all these lectures and the tv programs that we that are offered from our local imams and from overseas imams and from everywhere so we have the ability to do that we have also the ability to read and recite quran and listen to whatever shaykh that we like to listen to or to commit with an imam from the local society or the local city town in order to read quran with them so that we will keep on doing recitation of the quran during the month of ramadan we have the chance to give a charity if we are unable to reach out to the masjid we do that online to help the masjid to keep doors open and also to give a charity to the people to the people in need around the world i think we understand now we are weak, we are, as a human, we are weak, we are not able to face this unseen virus, subhanAllah. So how weak we are, we are very weak, and we always get our strings from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we make dua and ask Him, and we return to Him, and we flee to Him, and we ask Him to help us to, uh, to get out of this pandemic, inshallah, as soon as possible. So we are able to make dua, we are able to sit and eat and enjoy the breakfast, the iftar with our family members, we do the sahri meal, we pray taraweeh, we pray in jama'ah, we recite the Qur'an, and we take the benefit of the social media to connect with our loved ones, we donate online to our local masajid and to the people in need to give a charity and zakat, and to do our work from home uh, if it's possible, or to take the cautious and, rest, and to follow regulations if we have to go outside, outside our homes. So Alhamdulillah, Ramadan will come this year, or it has come with different feeling, and inshallah we will go through it, and we'll come out of it inshallah while we have established salat at our rooms, and we will continue to do that afterwards, that we are able to make jama'at within our homes, that we are able to connect with the whole world through the internet, and through the media, and through the technology. So Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah for the many blessings that He has given to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. So here, inshallah, nothing will affect us, nothing will stop us to continue to do the rituals and to enjoy Ramadan. Uh, this year, inshallah, will be much, much, inshallah, a great experience for everybody of us. And uh, we will, inshallah, continue to do the best that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved us to do because we want to have success. Still, as we said, doors of Jannah are opened, the uh, hellfire is locked. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, has given us opportunity to pray and ask Him for protection and also to ask Him for the blessings to be in Jannah and to give us the opportunity and the ability to do different worships. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us safe and allow us to practice all the best uh, of our ibadah and to, to connect with our family members and our loved ones. Uh, here in Canada, we would like to send our greetings to all our brothers and sisters everywhere in Africa, in the Middle East, and around the world. May Allah bless you all. And I would like to thank my brothers and the team of Al Huda Channel. Thank you for having me and giving me the opportunity to be with you in this blessed month of Ramadan. And I'm sure I will be with you again, inshallah, physically soon in, in your studio in Cairo. And I would love to uh, make dua. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless your effort, and we'll be together always, inshallah. May Allah give you all Jannah to Firdaus, and bless you and all your family members, my brothers and my sisters around the world. Jazakumullah khair from Canada, Imam Rifat Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair, Imam Rifat Muhammad. Um, beautiful, beautiful report about the uniqueness and the, the s special circumstances and, and how to have a unique Ramadan. Uh, Brother Mustafa, what did you think of this beautiful report? I mean, I can't wait for him to be physically in the studio and, and you know, come and visit and, and do another show. Um, but but mm, the report itself, what do you think? What, what are the points that really, really hit the spot there? Well, uh, he actually mentioned the main point itself that Allah has given us many blessings to um, to counteract on what our main condition is these days, because people they're now unable to travel, they're unable to see their loved ones. So definitely, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, due to His generosity, never-ending generosity, Allah the Almighty has always given us blessings to act as substitutes, even if it's temporary or not. And let's say 
it doesn't matter if we're going to be living in lockdown or not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always protect us and always give us blessings to aid us in our patience and so on. This is the, the beauty of Allah's mercy, is that He doesn't abandon you. He doesn't leave you just, you know, like um, unable to connect to the world. No, He gives you all the kind of tools that you need in order to reach out, to be dutiful to the mother, to the father, to the family, uh, to take care of your loved ones, to take care of your spouse. Um, let's say if you were in Canada and you're unable to reach out to the missus. No, Allah has given you the blessings in order to contact her. Everything okay. What about the, the main other points like donations and so on? Definitely, I couldn't agree more with Brother Rifat as well. MashaAllah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Thank you very much for the beautiful comments on, on the report. Uh, dear viewers, we are going to take a short, short break. So please, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned and we will continue very, very shortly, inshaAllah. Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness. May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness. Ramadan. Dear viewers, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all over the world we are experiencing a global pandemic. And this Ramadan season, we have a special show for you, and it is called Blessed Nights. During that show, we will have a lot of interactions with many sheikhs and doctors from all over the globe. Stay tuned with us. Huda TV, Blessed Nights. My brothers and sisters, I invite you to join me every night during the month of Ramadan with a brand new series entitled Comfort in Times of Crisis, wherein I will be going through the verses of the Quran, looking at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us to achieve comfort in times of crisis. Join me every day, inshallah. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says each and every one of us is a shepherd and each shepherd is responsible for his flock. There's nothing more beautiful, more pleasing, more pleasure inducing to a parent than to see their children being obedient to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. As parents, we are responsible for our children. We're responsible to upbring them to be righteous practicing Muslims. We're responsible to make them positive elements of our community. There's nothing more beautiful than for a parent to see their sons and their daughters being obedient to Allah and following in the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad With every great amana comes great responsibility. In order to know how to do this, in order to gain knowledge of how to be successful in aligning our upbringing to the Quran and the Sunnah. Join us on this episode, on these segments of Life's Adornments. Myself, Yusuf Kroma, and Sheikh Asim Lukman Al Hakim, we will take you on a journey, on a lesson filled enlightenment where we will discuss these crucial matters. We look forward to having you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, for the second segment of our second episode of Blessed Nights. 
Uh, before we go to our third report, I just wanted to share something with you, uh, Brother Mustafa, uh, concerning the uh, routine deeds that, that we are accustomed to doing during the month of Ramadan. For example, the recitation of the Qur'an. Now, uh, you know on a personal level that I know how to speak Arabic. But what a lot of people don't know is that I, I <laughs> I'm <laughs> horrible at reading and writing. SubhanAllah, because it's not, it's not my first uh, language. And um, uh, during that month, what I usually do is listen to an audio recitation of uh, uh, somewhat of a faster recitation, uh, like uh, Hidr. And uh, I, I follow along in the Qur'an, in the Mus'haf, with my finger, and mm -hmm. I try to recite and move my lips, and hopefully, inshallah, Get the th get the same uh, thawab or the same reward from uh, Allah Almighty for attempting uh, special uh, rituals or things that you are accustomed to doing during the month. The statement the Prophet ﷺ said: those who let's say stutter or those who struggle in reciting the Quran, they have actually twice the reward, and this is a good glad tidings. Now, if you think that, oh, I'm, I'm having a hard time reading the Qur'an, reciting the Qur'an, no, Allah is giving you twice the reward. This is the first thing. Okay. Uh, it's actually a good initiation of self-training and awareness that you'll be very happy. You're not wasting time. Everything is with reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first mm -hmm. thing. The second thing is that um, the best way to spend Ramadan is totally allowing yourself to commit to the Qur'an. Uh, only the Quran. Of course, you do other forms of worship, definitely, but they're all encompassing the Quran. To s you can recite the Quran, you can even understand the Quran. So, uh, let's say, for example, I personally, once I finish up like the 20 pages or 21 pages for one part of the Quran, I tend to have a simple read throughout the interpretation and the meanings of the Quran. Because when I'm trying to connect to Allah, I'm also trying to understand the meanings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his words and what how I can implement them in my personal life so this is what I personally do and definitely no one will recite the, the, the verse whether perfectly or not unless he will be gaining the rewards so basically okay okay uh, so basically just getting into the, the poetic devices into all of that speaking of p like poetic uh, beauty of, of uh, the Quran, we do have our third report, which will be, uh, inshallah, uh, something that I'm looking forward to. Uh, but I will let you uh, introduce. Who, who, who's our next? Who's our next guest? Who's our next reporter? Well, I'll tell you. It's not going to be a uh, report. It's going to be actually a nasheed, oh and okay. it's actually Ramadan, the best of days, okay. performed by Brother Abbas Yusuf. And uh, an additional note, it's actually courtesy from our beloved uh, families uh, from Al-Qarar Media in Bahrain. Excellent. All right, so dear viewers, please stay tuned and listen to this next nasheed, and we'll be right back right afterwards. Subhanallah, 
What a beautiful, beautiful nasheed. Um, I mean, for all the viewers who have a little bit of a musical inclination, I, I hope that that was something that they enjoyed. Um, what, what did you think, uh, Brother Mustafa? What did you think about the nasheed? I'm actually a person who likes to listen to a lot of nasheed because sometimes the words of Allah, they're very high, they're very, you know, it's a godly level. Sometimes you want to express the, the godly words in your own human level. So definitely I can relate to the nasheed. It's very, very humble and it's so, it's like a very, very concise in its words and it's prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in its own meaning. It's, he's supplicating, he's invocating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this nasheed. Very wonderful, mashallah. Very, very nice comment. I mean, this is, uh, you're commenting on the actual uh, uh, message behind the words and, you know, the linguistics. Yes. Uh, for, for me, I was paying attention to 
a little bit more details into the <laughs> cinematography of it <laughs> and the translation of the Arabic nasheed into the English words. I was really, really paying attention to that. Uh, SubhanAllah, it was, it was a great, great job uh, by the uh, um, Al Qarar Media uh, from Bahrain. It was a very, very good video, and I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, okay, so tell us, who is our next reporter? Who is our next report? Well, mashallah, we have from one of the high eminent scholars in the UK, Dr. Sajid Omar. And as I said, he's one of the students of knowledge and one who delivers the knowledge to a lot of Muslims in the UK, mashallah. Oh. Uh, one of the main titles is Keep Calm and Adapt itself. That's a very wonderful program. And doors of messages closed, but the doors of Jannah are open. This is such a wonderful title. Okay, okay. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, uh, Dr. Sajid Omar also uh, did a lot of different shows that were aired here on uh, Huda TV, uh, one of which was uh, Islam in 10 Minutes and uh, Etiquettes, Etiquettes 101. Okay, that's, uh, that's also two, two of the other shows that were aired here on, on Huda TV. So um, uh, right now I will leave the viewers to listen to the report inshallah and we'll be right back with you to discuss the points afterwards. Brothers and sisters in Islam, you know you and I, we will be tested. This is a universal law of the life of this world. But you and I also know, brothers and sisters in Islam, as Muslims, that sometimes losses are actually gains. And sometimes being broken is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raising us up and strengthening us. Because this is the way of the sunnah. For our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana yuhibbul fa'al. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to love positivity and being positive. On the other hand, we have Shaytan, and he's the total opposite. He doesn't love progress. He doesn't love positivity. He specializes in breeding sadness within the hearts and souls of the believers. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, he doesn't want us to see the cup as half full or light at the end of the tunnel. He only wants us to see doom and gloom he loves for us to see our masajid closed as us having lost the rewards of standing the nights of Ramadan. He wants us to see our masajid closed as us having lost the rewards of standing the night of Laylatul Qadr, the night of power and decree and virtue. He wants us to see us in isolation as us having lost the rewards of Eid. Indeed, he's an enemy. And Allah commands us to take him as an enemy. You know what, brothers and sisters in Islam, you and I, especially in this age, as we edge closer to the day of Qiyamah, and with regards to our religion, we always made to feel like the walls are closing in. We need to train ourselves constantly that, you know what, whatever Allah does, Allah only does good. The full picture is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reality of Allah's plan with us is with him. We only have pixels, pixels that the days and nights of this life give us. And we know very well, we can never understand the entire picture by just looking at pixels. We have to remain patient and gather pixels and gather pixels and gather pixels and remain upon obedience, remain upon that which pleases Allah whilst we do trusting the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing whatever Allah does, He does good. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu subhanallah when he accepted Islam how amazing was his Islam he did hajj with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he fell extremely ill after his hajj subhanallah he felt resigned to death that this is my illness of death he begins distributing matters pertaining to uh, or, or sorting out the affairs of his inheritance and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes to visit him and sees him busy with this he had one daughter and he was arranging what she would get after he passes away and what to do with the rest of his wealth subhanallah this is how he re how resigned he was to him passing away and guess what he lived for 45 years after that and Allah blessed him with 29 children brothers and sisters in Islam from a Muslim's perspective there's a silver lining in every cloud that is the hard reality. You know, when the Kaaba was protected, subhanAllah, because of the coronavirus and it was blocked off, people asked, you know, what positive idea can you use to explain what's happening in Mecca? And one of my students answered it beautifully. And I actually wrote it in a tweet and it went viral. That subhanAllah, the world can now see 
how we worship one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We never worshipped the Kaaba in Mecca. The Kaaba in Mecca was only a direction that we faced when we worship one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, our salah is happening five times a day, every day, despite the protection that is being afforded to the Kaaba. There's always a silver lining. And I can tell you because of this answer, because of this attitude, because of looking at things with the cup half full, many people started reading about Islam and some of them even accepted Islam. La ilaha illallah. You know, I speak to people, brothers and sisters in Islam, and this is the essence of the video today. So please pay attention. This is important. I speak to them about Ramadan, the greatest month of the year. It's about to knock our doors, a guest that visits us yearly. And subhanallah, I sense that the true excitement that I witness in people every year is just not there this year because of the coronavirus, because of the masajid being closed. It's as if they've become victims to the whispers of shaitan that with our masajid closed, we've lost our Ramadan or because without our masajid, we can't have a Ramadan. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to see the silver lining. And you know where the silver lining is in? It's in our realization of how merciful Allah is and how merciful the Sharia is, how merciful Islam is, how merciful the actions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa la ilaha illallah. Because of the situation that we are in, we are forced to think about Allah and His Rasul and the Sharia in a way that we probably, most probably, wouldn't have thought about things this way if we weren't in this situation. Think about it, brothers and sisters in Islam. Did Allah make Salah in the Masjid behind the Imam a condition for our forgiveness in Ramadan, a condition for us achieving the rewards of Laylatul Qadr, a condition for us being freed from the hellfire? Absolutely not. Isn't this a mercy? In fact, do you know that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in, they prayed Taraweeh in their homes by themselves and with their families? They only prayed two or three days with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in congregation, subhanallah. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam noticed them gathering, so he didn't come out. He stayed in his home. And the next day he told them, I saw what you did, subhanallah. It was a beautiful thing, but I feared that Allah will make it compulsory upon us. So I stayed in my home and prayed by myself. How merciful is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam? That subhanallah, we can understand his action then even better now. For imagine if it did become a condition and it did become compulsory, what would we do now with our masajid closed? Now, obviously there would be solutions because the Sharia always has a solution. But understand brothers and sisters in Islam, subhanallah, you can pray tarawih in your home by yourself and experience the Ramadan that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in experienced without feeling the guilt that you're not in jama'ah because in, in the, at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and with the best generation of Islam, that's how they prayed tarawih. You might say, I haven't memorized the Quran. Well, how many Sahaba did memorize the entire Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and this is a mercy from him, فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Recite that which is easy for you to recite. Subhanallah. Even if you only know قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدْ Repeat it once, 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. If you feel comfortable that now you've, you've achieved what you wanted to achieve from your unit while standing, your unit of prayer while standing, then go into ruku', then go into sujood, then come back up. And if it's still قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدْ Alhamdulillah. Repeat it time and time again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy upon us. And this way you can achieve the rewards of Ramadan, achieve the rewards of Laylatul Qadr, achieve the rewards of Eid, subhanallah. And then also, look at the mercy of Islam. We have the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if we used to be um, commonly associated with an act, and a time comes where we are prevented from that act, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us the rewards of having done that act, even though we haven't lifted a finger. La ilaha illallah. The message, brothers and sisters in Islam, don't be sad, smile, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more as we realize how merciful He is. Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more for the merciful Sharia. Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more for a merciful messenger, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this Ramadan, let us celebrate us being believers, celebrate the mercy of the Sharia, celebrate the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a way we couldn't have celebrated these matters in that way if we were in normal circumstances. This is what I want us to do, brothers and sisters in Islam. 
immediately now and now. I want us to get rid of the negativity that shaitan has been feeding into our hearts and our souls and bring in the necessary positivity from the Quran, from the Sunnah, from our knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his names and attributes. Yes, no doubt this Ramadan is going to be different. It will be a Ramadan outside of the masjid. It will be a Ramadan without the community. But Alhamdulillah, our opportunities for greatness are intact, are still the same. Our chances to be forgiven from standing the nights of Ramadan still exist. Our chances of achieving the rewards of Laylatul Qadr still exist. Our chances of being freed from the hellfire still exist. Bring in the positivity and go through this Ramadan having good thoughts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inshallah we will get to the end of Ramadan having achieved all of the rewards of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. Let us go through this Ramadan never ever forgetting that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala rewards us for actions that we would have done if we couldn't do them because we were, pre we were prevented from doing so. Subhanallah. This is the emotion that we should have. We need to bring it together and give Ramadan the excitement that it deserves. I love you all for the sake of Allah, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And I look forward to seeing you at the other end, holding the rewards of Ramadan, inshallah. What a beautiful report again. Um, Dr. Sajid Omar uh, from the UK. A beautiful, beautiful message to be our final report for today. Uh, talking about how can we see the glass half full. Uh, MashaAllah, beautiful message. So many different points that we can touch upon and, and, and discuss. What do you think, Brother Mustafa? Well, SubhanAllah, as we said earlier, and we will always say this until the day we finally meet Allah, the All-Merciful, is that the generosity of Allah knows no bounds. And definitely Satan, as Allah had described in the Quran, that he is an enemy, therefore you take him as an enemy. And in order to take him on, we're not going to be fighting with swords and shields like fighting a dragon and fairy tales. It's by committing yourself to the worship of Allah and being thankful, showing gratitude from the heart, full-heartedly thanking Allah all the time. Instead of complaining, saying that oh, we're not able to go to the mosques, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's being worshipped. Should the mosques be no longer locked down, then you, you will start praying. But if you are unable to pray in the mosques, you, don't no, you do not despair. All you have to do is pray to Allah and say, Oh Allah, this is what I have for now. This is the best that I can do. And definitely I will do my best to please you with that. SubhanAllah. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much for that comment. Uh, dear viewers, we have uh, come to the end of this second episode of Blessed Nights. Please uh, stay tuned for another episode tomorrow, inshallah, idnillah. And I leave you with peace and blessings of God Almighty. And please uh, take care of yourselves. Stay home. Stay safe. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Sabat layalikum bi shahri al khayri wal ghufran. Ramadan, 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 Ramadan. May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness. May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness. May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness. May your Ramadan nights be blessed with welfare and forgiveness. Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan.